first fight firing a foot to the right. So for the rest of the bullets I used, I aimed a foot to the left and got a bullseye every time. <laughs> On that side of your map pocket, this pocket it contained a, a, a dre field dressing. Under the camouflage netting, they had a what they called a shell dressing. So you had to be specific which one you used. <laughs> There's no mines, and coming the other way with. Um, TCVs full of troops. I think they were the Duke of Wellington's, I'm not quite sure. But they look ghastly. They look haggard and dirty and sort of. They've been there a long time and they've been somewhere horrible by the look of it. And there was a lot of banter from them going on about our prospects and in the future. And also, we couldn't understand it, we were going on about bread. And uh, we understood afterwards what it meant was that. Uh, they hadn't seen bread and we weren't going to see bread and we didn't, we ate biscuits. Another vehicle called a, a Lloyd carrier, it's like a brain gun carrier, but it was slightly different. It, uh, it towed seven pounder anti-tank guns. It, in the night it had gone out of our wood into this clearing to position the gun then pull it back in again and because it had been this clearing had been a, uh, cleared by the woodmen and whatnot mm. there were some stumps and this Lloyd carrier stranded itself on this <laughs> on this stump 20 meters in front of my little trench and we got a little parapet around it with the stuff that we got out and we took turns in uh, keeping your eye over the top of the trench, your steel helmet down there, yeah. with your knees sort of bent, you know, so you slot in so yeah. sort of like that. And out of the blue, an almighty bang went off. It <laughs> filled me chin and me neck with pellets of stone and gravel and bits and pieces and completely me shattered me as well because I can remember the, uh, the mate in the, uh, in the trench offered me a cigarette when well, I didn't smoke but, uh, <laughs> and of course the, the crime went out stretcher bearers I saw him anyway with his bicycle. I yeah. said, "You know, can you can you tell the uh, the captain, whoever it was, that uh, I want to see him?" And all he did was said, "I can't do any more," and uh, also said that I didn't want to desert. I didn't want to run away. And I thought, well, they won't shoot me. Not this time. Of <laughs> Not this time. They put me on a, a what they call an open charge. They gave me uh, sort of well horrible things to do, like clearing a toilet of all the, the, the droppings that were in it. And we we moved from Howe back to Cleve, the Sand of Cleves. It had been severely bombed by the British. It's a lovely ancient town. It was all just just craters and things right. and then they broke the two battalions up they all came to the 7th and the 4th Somerset Light Infantry they had a massive parade of uh, as a farewell sort of parade before they broke them up except me <laughs> <laughs> I went upstairs into the loft with some dormer windows looking down at it all took a photograph of them all and there's an official photograph of the other side of the group 